I'm Anthony Marinelli, and I'd like to show you how to create the bass sound from PYT from Michael Jackson's Thriller album. So there's a little bit of backstory, you know, on this on this song. When I was working on the album, PYT wasn't really a certain song that was going to go on the record. And James Ingram was asked to compose the song sort of more at the last minute compared to the other songs on Thriller. So he came up with this song very quickly and the production happened very quickly. So the studios were being, you know, pretty much used up because there were the, so the, the Thriller songs that needed production were taking up uh, Studio A and Studio B at Westlake. So I ended up in the hallway with James, James Ingram one afternoon programming uh, the Lindrum for this song and just making a demo and James was just kind of singing it. He had a demo on cassette and we created a drum track start to finish with the Lindrum, like a song on the Lindrum. So you can program all the patterns and create a song so the whole thing would play. And then we took this Lindrum that was sitting on top of anvil cases from musicians in the hallway at Westlake into the studio when it wasn't being used by the E.T. album that Michael was creating at the same time as he was working on the Thriller album and uh, patched in the Lindrum. A couple hours later, Paul Jackson Jr. shows up, Lewis Johnson is there, and Greg Gaines is playing keyboards and we're, we're like tracking the basic tracks with the, with the Lindrum, this Dr. Click, and Michael kind of singing along, you know, the melody with James. And that was quite a day for me to be in a room with all these guys and basically just like starting and stopping the Dr. Click that was, you know, firing the Lindrum. And that was the demo drum track that was uh, later replaced by Ndugu. But that's the backstory on the song. And then, you know, we recreated um, the other parts because Greg was playing uh, keyboards on that. The other part that's interesting is this sound was, it's doubling uh, an electric bass part played by Lewis Johnson. So let's get into the sound. I'll show you how it was made on the ARP 2600. Hit it. I'm using my favorite ARP 2600. It's a Tonus module. And it sounds very similar to a Mini Moog because it has a Moog, a Moog ladder filter built into it. It's one of the earlier ARP 2600s when they were able to do that. It has three oscillators, one, two, three. And I'm using just oscillator two and oscillator three. I'm using a pulse wave from oscillator two patched into the filter and I'm showing you with patch cords. There's normals on the synthesizer. So you don't have to patch everything, but I want to show you what it looks like with the patch. So pulse wave from oscillator two into the filter. Oscillator two is an octave higher than oscillator three. And the pulse width is set at about 22%, something like that. So you have to use your ear to hear what the sound is like. So here's the sound of the waveform. Here's a square wave. Here it gets square and then move it down to this more reedy sound that's going to be more like an acoustic bass, uh, an electric bass. And it's going to sound like the high part of the sound. And then the low part of the sound is a sawtooth wave from oscillator three, and it's an octave lower. So neither one really gives you enough personality. So when you add them together, you get the low from oscillator three for support and then definition from adding oscillator two. And I like to have, when I'm using a two oscillator bass sound, I think it's really important to push one oscillator more than the other. So if there's two oscillators and they're, they start to cancel sometimes when they get really in tune, this way the bass fundamental will always be there because one oscillator will be dominant. So it won't really cancel out that way. So I'm pushing the lower octave, oscillator three. You can hear it if I make them even. And it doesn't even change the sound that much, but it just gives you enough so that you don't get cancellation. And then in the filter, I have a little bit of resonance, no cutoff frequency, it's down to zero. And I'm modulating the filter with 
the ADSR envelope generator. And I have a, a slow attack time, so there's a little bit of uh, front on the sound. That would be a, a very quick attack. You hear that just little bit of lip? I'll do it again. That little bit of f f makes it a little funky. It picks up the resonance. And then the decay time is short without the sustained voltage. It's very short. And by adding a little bit of sustain, it just carries the sound a little bit longer. And then there's no release time, so I can articulate. And you don't get this effect. So keep that short. And then another important, there's two more really important sound uh, aspects of this sound to create the personality. One is setting the modulation amount from the ADSR envelope generator to the right place, because if you're too low, you get kind of a plucky, dull sound. And if you're too high, then you don't really have a bass. And you don't, there's like a sweet spot in here where you get low and enough articulation to create some personality. And it cuts through the track, but you still have low. So make sure, like don't just go by these lines. When you're working on your, any synthesizer, um, use your ear because there's like little subtle differences and they all add up, like just a little bit of resonance and getting this frequency to the right place. And the last really important part of the sound is not having the keyboard volt, the keyboard control voltage um, tracking the filter. So as I play high, the sound remains dull. If I have keyboard control voltage tracking the filter, the sound's way too bright. So I'm sticking this in here to sort of nullify that so there's no tracking. Sometimes you might want a little bit of tracking so the higher notes speak a little, but in this case, for this kind of bass, um, you don't really need any. And then the last thing is, well, what do I do with the filter? I have oscillators and so the filter, I don't really need an, uh, a VCA, so I'm not using it. I'm just going straight out of the, v, uh, the VCF because I like the sound in this case of not coloring it with a VCA. So I take a patch cord right out of the filter, go right into this mixer, and send it to the engineer. So engineers may put a little bit of compression on it, some EQ, something like that, you know, to fit it into the track. And um, that's how this sound was basically created. We wanted a functional sound with personality, and then, you know, Rod Temperton's arrangement really does the job, and the part was beautifully played by Greg Fillingaines um, at Westlake Studios. So here you have it, the bass from PYT. Thank you for following me on social media. I love synthesizers so much, so it's my pleasure to make these videos for you. If you'd like more of these videos, please like and subscribe on this channel.